together in the collective prayer in your hymnal. It's at 353, a prayer crash Wednesday. O oh God, maker of everything and judge of all that you have made, from the dust of the earth you have formed us, from the dust of death you would raise us up. By the redemptive power of the cross, create in us clean hearts and put within us a new spirit, that we may repent of our sins and lead lives worthy of your calling. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Our readings tonight are traditional to this day. Um, it first is 2 Corinthians 5, beginning at verse 20. So we are ambassadors for Christ, and since God is making God's appeal through us, we entreat you on behalf of Christ to be reconciled to God. For our sake he made him to be sin who knew no sin, so that in him we might become the righteousness of God. As we work together with him, we urge you to not accept the grace of God in vain. For he has said, at the acceptable time I have listened to you, and on the day of salvation I have helped you. See, now is the acceptable time. See, now is the day of salvation. We are putting no obstacle in anyone's way, so that no fault may be found with our ministry. But as servants of God, we have commended ourselves in every way, through great endurance and afflictions, hardships, calamities, beatings, imprisonments, riots, labors, sleepless nights, hunger, by purity of knowledge, patience, kindness, holiness of spirit, and genuine love, truthful speech, and the power of God, with the weapons of righteousness for the right hand and for the left, honor and dishonor, and ill treat, and ill repute and good repute. We are treated as impostors, and yet we are true as unknown and yet we are well known, as dying and see we are alive, as punished and yet not killed, as sorrowful yet rejoicing, as poor yet being made rich, and having nothing yet possessing everything. The reading from Matthew comes from part of Jesus' Sermon on the Mount, instructions about how to live as we go into this time of digging deep into our faith. He says, Beware of practicing your piety before others in order to be seen by them, for then you have no reward from your Father in heaven. So whenever you give alms, do, so, do not sound the trumpet before you as the hypocrites do in the synagogues and in the streets so that you may be praised by others. Truly, I tell you, they have received their reward. But when you give alms, do not let your left hand know what your right hand is doing, so that your alms may be done in secret, and your Father in heaven who sees them in secret will reward you. And whenever you pray, do not be like the hypocrites, for they love to stand and pray in the synagogues and at the street corners, so that they may be seen by others. Truly, I tell you, they have received their reward. But whenever you pray, go into your room and shut the door and pray to your Father in secret that your Father who sees you in secret will reward you. There ends the reading. May God add a blessing. It is a season to begin to come again before God. I'm aware that for the last two years we haven't been able to have this service because of circumstances in our world. And so for me, it's wonderful once more to be together, to commit our ways to the ways of God. But hopefully, although Paul is sometimes hard to understand, you can hear Paul's words coming through the centuries. It's been uh, a joy to kind of walk through the book of Acts. I've been doing that on a Wednesday morning live feed and seeing all that he went through. And as he says, he went through hardships and riots and beatings and imprisonments, all of that and more, because he wanted people to know that Jesus had come into the world so that we might know God and be forgiven and be made whole.
But he says uh, towards the end, although it's hard to understand and I didn't read it all that well, that even though all of this had happened to him and people had thought of him crazy and just useless, he knows that his life is full of meaning and deep and rich. And so looking at our lives as the world looks at our lives is not always helpful. It's kind of what Jesus is saying. Don't go out there trying to impress anybody. I don't think really, um, well, I guess there are some Christians who do that, but probably not us in this room. And so the encouragement is not just not to make yourself showy as a Christian, but to spend that time in private with God. And for me, that's what this Lent can become, is a time to once more reflect on our lives and reflect in who God is in our lives. It is a wonderful gift. These 40 days, we are remembering. I love the image of remember. It means to put back together, to put back, to take all of the members, and reunite them. So as we put back together the remembrance of Jesus in the wilderness, of a time away before he began his ministry, to draw close to God and find out how deep and strong God's love was for him, but also how strong he would need to be in the coming days and weeks and years. And so we have this time in the Christian life. It is a wonderful marking for me. This day begins the season of Lent. You're invited during the service to use ashes, as to have ashes imposed, put upon uh, your forehead, and some people prefer their hand. Those ashes were created from old palm branches that were used on a Palm Sunday. And so the image was that as that old year has come and gone, with its good and its bad, its difficult and its joy, with all that was in it, to let it go to God. And as we let go of that past year, particularly this past year, particularly this past two years, letting go of all of that and asking for God once more to cleanse us and make us whole. Because we are mortal. Because we don't have that power. God does. And God is always wanting to pour out that healing, that forgiveness, that wholeness to us. But until we acknowledge that we need the help, we need the cleansing, it doesn't happen. The story I think of is... Uh, <laughs> is one of my sons. They had had a, a favorite frog. Uh, Teenage Mutant Ninjas were popular, but also they had had a ceramic frog. And it sat in their room and it was about yay big. And one, no, one day I noticed it was gone. So I let it go for a day, probably for two. Who knows, I was running around like a crazy woman trying to do everything that I did. But then finally I said, honey, what happened to your frog? I thought you liked it there on the table. I did. And you could tell. I don't know if you've ever been around a boy, but you can tell when something's wrong and when they're getting shifty. And so I said, where'd you put the frog? It's in my drawer. Huh? So you have to go to the next one. Why would you put it in your drawer? Had to. <laughs> you get down to these millisecond. Why did you have to? I don't want to tell you. <laughs> okay, let's move forward and it's just been there. <laughs> have a guy all night. Just let me know where the frog is and if you want to put it back out. Can. Okay, let's approach this from another angle. Can I see the frog? Okay. Goes to the dresser, pulls it open the bottom drawer. And there it is. It's been broken to about five pieces. I said, what happened? It fell. Or 
Did you throw it at your brother? Well, okay, I threw it at my brother, but you're not doing it anyway. So there you go. I knew that's what had happened. <laughs> but I also said, you know, we can fix it. Really? Sure, we can fix it. Let's take it out here. Try to get it ready. Get some of super glue mom keeps on hand and we'll put it back together. He didn't want to tell me what was going on. He didn't want to tell me about the brokenness. He wanted to try to shove it into a drawer and forget it, even though he missed it. For me, I've thought about that event a number of times, thinking how often things break in our lives and we shove them to the side, trying to ignore the hurt. But until God knows about it, God will not invade our lives to try to change it. You see, I believe in God's power to change our lives, but I also believe in God's willingness to let us have the choice, the choice about what we bring to God. <laughs> Granted, I didn't give my son a lot of choice, but I'm a pretty pushy lady. <laughs> and I think sometimes God also kind of pushes us to let God in because it's letting God in that that healing occurs. It's showing the broken frog, showing the pieces. And I know once God sees it, God says, yeah, we can fix that. Let me have it and I can heal it. And so that for me is often what this Ash Wednesday is about. One more time taking the 40 days to give to God all the stuff I have been hanging on to, wondering about, stressing about. And it takes me time, and so having this 40 days is good, to once again let God create in me a clean heart and renew a right spirit within me. It's what the people of God have gone to do for thousands of years. And it's what we now join with them to do once more.